here we go. Frankie Fish and the Sonic Suitcase. We are up to chapter 22. Let's get eel. One of the few things Frankie had learned from his biology project was that electric eels actually do give off electricity. It's how they got their name. If they gave off a foul stench, they prob would have probably been called stinky eels. But one of the many things Frankie didn't know about electric eels was exactly how much electricity they produced. He hoped, more than he'd hoped for anything, that it would be enough to recharge the Sonic Suitcase's battery back up to 17% so that they could get home before Frankie disappeared off the face of the earth. Suddenly, the lights in the George Theatre were switched off and a drum roll sounded from behind the curtains. A single spotlight shone onto the middle of the red curtain and the amazing Fredo's extravaganza began. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Fredo bellowed into a microphone from backstage. He has wowed them in New York City. He hadn't. He amazed them in Tokyo. Never been there. And they just couldn't get enough of him, uh, get enough of him in Barcelona. He had paella once. Now back, now back in his hometown of Glasgow. He had actually never left. It's the amazing Fredo. Grand music rang out as the amazing Fredo put the microphone down and appeared through the red curtain with a flourish. He twirled his cape as he bowed to in, in, the enthusiastic applause. A moment later, he was joined by his beautiful assistant, Clarissa. As soon as the show got started, so did Frankie and Grandad. They hustled over to the water tank of death with the sonic suitcase and their bundle of copper wires. With sweaty hands, Frankie tugged on the slippery black cloth. It slithered off, revealing the enormous tank. Around the base was a kind of black skirt, and beneath that was a small ledge just big enough for a Frankie-sized kid to lie on. Grandad laid the sonic suitcase on the ledge and began carefully but quickly connecting the copper wiring to the complex machinery inside. Hurry, hissed Frankie, before someone sees us. The amazing Fredo may not have been world famous, but he knew his magic and performed it well. With Clarissa expertly twirling and prancing around him, the amazing Fredo did the classics. A rabbit jumped from his hat. An extraordinarily long line of bright-coloured and impeccably ironed handkerchief slipped from his sleeve. Doves fluttered out from beneath a white tablecloth. The crowd oohed and aahed with applause, at which the amazing Fredo lapped up like a thirsty horse. Meanwhile, on the side of the stage, the time travellers were still racing to get their setup sorted. Grandad fiddled with the wires as Frankie ran back and forth to the little hole in the curtain, but the two seats in the front row stayed empty. Where were young Alfie Fish and Nurse Hopley? Have Frankie and Grandad's interfering disrupted history forever? After Clancy Fairplay's atrocious reaction to Frankie, had Nurse Hopley decided... What could she have decided? That she didn't ever want to be around any race car drivers? It was almost too painful to consider. Frankie ran to a backstage mirror that was surrounded by flowers, sent to the amazing Fredo by the amazing Fredo. He anxiously checked his face under the bright lights and was horrified to see he now had peroxide white hair and a six centimetre scar down his left cheek. As the oohs and ahs continued from the audience, Frankie sunk to the floor. The fact that his face was still changing could only mean one thing. The plan was failing. Frankie suddenly felt swamped with despair. He wouldn't ever get home. Not ever. It was pointless to keep trying. He may as well just sit here and wait until he disappeared. As Frankie's eyes began filling with tears, he reached into his pocket for a tissue, but all he found was some dried out flowers. Frankie stared at them a tingle going down his spine. They were the forgotten forget-me-nots that Nana had given him so many years into the future. Frankie could almost see Nana as if she was standing right there in front of him with her sweet warm smile, the smell of her blueberry pancakes filling his nostrils. Suddenly his mum and dad were right there with him too, joined by his sister St. Lou. Please don't give up, Francis, he imagined Lou saying. You're the only one who can fix this terrible situation. 
imaginary Lou had a much less annoying face, voice than the real St. Lou, and for the first time ever she sounded like she was depending on him, like the entire Fish family was. Very big guitar strum. Frankie jumped to his feet, his batteries recharged. Now he just needed to do the same thing to the sonic suitcase. Frankie slid across to Grandad like a baseball player sliding into home base. This is going to work, Grandad, Frankie promised as Grandad finally took the other end of the copper wire and wrapped it around a small bolt. It had better, replied Grandad, not looking certain at all. Now, we, all we have to do is get this bolt into the tank and then all of a sudden the lights flickered. The crowd gasped nervously as the sound of thunder filled the back room. Backstage, Frankie and Grandad froze as they heard the light tapping, the light tip-tapping of footsteps approaching. Frankie yanked the wire out of Grandad's hands and tossed it into the water, where the bolt sank slowly to the bottom of the tank. The wire glinted in the low light, but neither Grandad or Frankie were around to see it. Grandad dived to the side of the stage when Frankie ducked under the water tank of death, just as Clarissa appeared. That was close, Frankie gasped to himself. He felt the wheels below him start to roll and realised that Clarissa was pushing the tank on stage. And now, the amazing Fredo announced... I shall perform a trick that no one in the history of the world has ever attempted, not even the great Houdini. Not true, he did this most nights. My beautiful assistant Clarissa shall handcuff me and blindfold me. She will then usher me into a tank full of water, but not just any tank. This is the world famous water tank of death. Nobody out of Scotland had heard of it. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Clarissa shall release not one, but not two, not four, but five electric eels inside the tank. Beneath the tank's skirt, Frankie squeezed his eyes shut and crossed his fingers. This had to work. The sound of the thunder was booming throughout the theatre. Mm. They say if a man receives more than five attacks from an electric eel, he shall die, proclaimed the amazing Fredo. This fact is not completely factual, but as, you, as you'll know by now, both facts and magic tricks were just an illusion for Fredo. Bring out the water tank of death, shouted Fredo, as Clarissa rolled it out right on cue. Under the flickering stage lights, the water tank of death looked quite dramatic to unsuspecting eyes, even though it was just a regular tank with lightning bolts drawn on either side in gold paint and a black paint trim. Speaking of unsuspecting eyes, neither Clarissa nor Fredo had noticed the copper wiring connected to the back of the water tank of death, leading down to the sonic suitcase and Frankie beneath the tank. Cautiously, Frankie lifted one up one edge of the tank's skirt and looked out at the side of the stage. Grandad was standing there, his knuckles crammed into his mouth. Frankie knew what he was thinking. It'll be a miracle if they don't see it, if, and if they do, it's game over. Frankie quickly dropped the cloth as the, the amazing Fredo climbed a small ladder into the deadly tank, which, despite its name, had so far been responsible for zero deaths. It's nice once you're in, Fredo quipped and as Clarissa made a show of blindfolding and handcuffing him. It was clear that this was her favourite part of the show. Now Clarissa, Fredo boomed, fetch the electric eels. Frankie reached over to the sonic suitcase. The battery life ticked down to 1%. Hurry, hurry, he whispered. Cue more flashing lights and the sounds of thunder as Clarissa fetched a bucket of electric eels from the back of the stage. But as Clarissa walked back to the, towards the tank of death, she noticed something that stopped her in her tracks, I presume. A suspicious long copper wire leading from inside the water all the way under the curtain at the tank's base, out of which poked a 12-year-old's feet. Oh no. Chapter 23. Clarissa's Revenge. Clarissa! screamed the amazing Fredo from the water tank of death. Are you deaf or just completely unprofessional? The slightly baffled audience looked at each other, trying to work out if Fredo's belligerence towards his assistant was real or just part of the show. Clarissa stood with a bucket of eels looking at Fredo waist deep in the room temperature water. Hmm. Then she looked at the pair of feet under the tank. Then Clarissa did the unexpected 
perhaps because she was tired of being referred to as the amazing Fredo's beautiful assistant, or maybe because she had a soft spot for pranks, Clarissa gave Grandad a small nod and a smile and gently nudged Frankie on the, on the feet. It was the kind of nudge that meant, don't worry, I won't dob. Then, without a word, she continued onto the ladder of the water tank of death, where soggy Fredo was growing increasingly impatient, and emptied the eels into the tank. Splash, 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 splash. As the audience oohed and aahed again, the amazing Fredo began to struggle out of his binding. Frankie scrambled out from under the tank's skirt and commando crawled across the back of the stage to Grandad. Mm, there they are. If we don't get out of here, you should marry that woman, gasped Grandad to his grandson, who wasn't about to disagree. Just keep your fingers crossed. Remember, each charge only goes for two milliseconds, and I estimate we need at least five charges to get our battery back uh, over 17%, which will hopefully be enough to get us back home. The time travellers watched anxiously as the five electric eels swam around in the water tank of death. The blindfolded amazing Fredo wasn't having much luck with his handcuffs, or perhaps that was all part of the show. Hard to tell. Frankie wasn't quite sure where to look, but he stared intently at the copper wire, hoping to see some kind of electric charge move along it into the sonic suitcase. Nothing. The crowd was really getting into the act now, cheering and gasping as the eels circled the flailing magician. If only they knew that what else was happening on this, that stage, that there was a 12-year-old boy and his granddad from the future hiding behind the curtain, trying to charge up their crazy homemade time machine and hurl them to hurl them back to 2017. Or if that blushing couple who were supposed to be sitting in the front row didn't arrive soon and seal their love for each other, then an entirely entire family of fishes could become as extinct as dinosaurs or fax machines. But of course, the crowd knew none of this. They just knew that the amazing Fredo was thrashing about in a water tank of electric eels. And truth be told, they were on the eel side. <laughs> Bite him in the private parts, yelled one Glaswegian from the back of the uh, from the back as the crowd became rowdy with excitement. Ouch, Fredo screamed as an eel charged him. Yeah, screamed the crowd. And they, as they screamed, Frankie and Grandad let out their own shouts of delight because just as Fredo was being bitten by the first electric eel, mm -hmm. uh, a young Alfie fish and his date, Mavis Hopley, walked arm in arm to their seats. They may have been running a little bit late, but for Frankie and Grandad, they were right on time. Bzzz, yeah, yelled Frankie at the top of his lungs. Mm. At exactly the same moment, a trail of electricity ran all the way from inside the tank of death, down the copper wire and into the sonic suitcase. It's working, Grandad exclaimed, grabbing Frankie's arm. Four more, and we need at least four more, Frankie whispered excitedly. Another electric charge. Bzzz, ah, screamed Fredo as the audience broke into rapturous applause. Three more, Grandad breathed, almost cutting off the blood supply in Frankie's arm. Bzzzt! Ouchie wah wah, wailed Fredo. Even Clarissa gave a little yelp of excitement and discreetly punched the air with her closed fist. Wow, those eels are really going after Fredo. Two more, said Frankie and Grandad together. The crowd was in a frenzy. Private parts, private parts, private parts, chanted everyone in unison. The magic show was quickly turning into a, a WWE fight. All of a sudden, Fredo raised an arm toward the roof. He'd gotten one hand free from the handcuffs. Surely the second one wouldn't be off very, would be off very, very soon. Oh no, said Frankie in a voice much louder than a whisper. He'll, he'll be out any second now. Did we get enough? Grandad's face fell. He shook his head. It will take five charges minimum to get enough electricity into the computer, he muttered. There have only been three. Mm. Oh. How are they going to do it? The crowd booed as the amazing Fredo triumphantly raised both hands and whipped off the blindfold. Some audience members were clearly hoping to see the f very first death in the water tank of death. But Fredo had escaped and was now gesturing grandly for his ladder out of the tank as more lightning and thunder effects filled the room. For some reason, the eels had decided to let, off, let him off easy now. Frankie was frantic, not caring if he was seen. He dived from the side of the stage and lifted the skirt of the tank to check the sonic suitcase. Maybe Grandad's wrong, he thought. 
wildly. Maybe we do have enough charge now, but no, the suitcase only had 13% battery life, four short of what they needed. Frankie looked back at Grandad, who was covering his face with his hands. Then he stared at the suitcase, forcing his brain to work harder than it had ever done before. Then he had an idea. Bingo, or rather Bruno. The amazing Fredo had said the biggest eel Bruno was too angry to take part in today's performance. And Frankie knew that an angry electric eel was a powerful electric eel. Don't do that, buddy. And power was what they needed right now. Um... Frankie looked over at the small tank that Clarissa had placed behind the water tank of death and noticed it was rocking from side to side. Something very large and extremely furious was desperately trying to get out. Frankie caught Clarissa's eye, then nodded towards the tank that held Bruno. Clarissa somehow understood and gave him a wink. Frankie decided right there and then he would marry her if this mission went awry. Frankie sneaked over to the mini tank, cautiously opening, opened the lid and was met with the biggest, angriest eel ever. Bruno's mouth opened wild, wide like he was attempting to eat Frankie for lunch. Frankie fell back on his bum in fright as, as the ele he saw electric charges shoot through the dark, swirling waters. Quick! Grandad yelled as the amazing Fredo started climbing out of the water tank of death. Frankie gritted his teeth. He picked up the mini tank and with Bruno trying to take out a chunk of, out of his arm, he threw the entire thing towards Fredo and into the water tank of death. Nice, Bruno, the amazing Fredo whispered. Nice, Bruno, the amazing Fredo whis whispered meekly. The tank, the tank water instantly lit up like a wet Christmas tree. Frankie dived under the tank getting a nice little shock himself in the process. The amazing Fredo's hair went bolt upright. His pencil-thin moustache shot out at 90 degrees and he went momentarily cross-eyed. The crowd gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> oh, poor Fredo. Bruno! The amazing Fredo screamed as Clarissa giggled guiltily nearby. Frankie looked up to see a spark of electricity flow from the tank of death into the now... Now suitcase of life, and the battery ticked over from 14% to up to 18. They'd done it. Frankie turned triumphantly to Grandad and gave him a quick thumbs up, aware that despite having a time machine, they still did not have much time at all. As the amazing Fredo furiously but gingerly scrambled out of the water tank of electricity to the cheers of the delighted audience, Frankie snatched up the sonic suitcase and ran over to his Grandad. Come on, Grandad, let's go home.